Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sahar from DentaVest, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD ADA and AFK exam. Today, I have taken a topic of oral surgery that says indications and contraindications for the removal of tooth or tooth extraction. Let us uh, talk about the details of it. First of all, we should see what are the indications for extraction. Could be caries, pulpal necrosis, periodontal disease, orthodontic reasons, malposed teeth, cracked teeth, impacted teeth, supernumerary teeth, teeth associated with pathological lesions, addition therapy, teeth involved in jaw fractures. Let us first talk about the caries. The caries is definitely if the tooth is grossly decayed and cannot be restored. It goes for extraction. The most common and widely accepted reason to remove a tooth that is severely carious that cannot be restored. Pulpal necrosis. Pulpal necrosis if the tooth is dead and the patient does not want to go for RCT or endo treatment. Root canal that is tortuous, calcified and untreatable by standard endodontic techniques. Our endodontic treatment has been done but has failed to relieve pain or provide drainage and the patient does not desire the treatment. In case of necrosis, tooth, for example, here you can see this is a tooth with internal resorption. It should go for RCT but the patient says no, don't want RCT. I don't want to conserve or preserve the teeth. That's okay. We have to go for extraction then. Then the periodontal disease. If you have a severe adult periodontitis where the tooth become mobile with excessive bone loss and irreversible tooth mobility is seen, then you may have to go for the extraction and replace the tooth with an implant or a bridge. For the orthodontic reason, patient undergoing orthodontic correction like for treatment of class 2, class 3 cases, we do the camouflaging by doing the extractions to create the space for the teeth to move. When you have a crowded dentition with insufficient arch length, will frequently require the extraction and the most commonly extracted tooth for the camouflaging class 2 and class 3 orthodontic treatment is you extract maxillary and the mandibular premolars. The teeth which are malposed means they are not correctly aligned can be removal for indicated for the removal for several situations. For example, if the malaligned teeth is traumatizing your soft tissue cannot be repositioned by ortho treatment, they should be extracted. For example, a maxi third molar, which erupts in severe buck version and causes ulceration and soft tissue trauma of the cheek, yes, you need to extract it. A malpose tooth that become hyper erupted because of loss of the teeth in opposing arch may interfere with the construction of adequate prosthesis. So, that also need the extraction. Crack teeth. An uncommon indication for extraction of the tooth is with the crack crown or fractured tooth because a cracked tooth can be painful and it is unmanageable by more conservative technique. So cracked tooth which have already endodontic treatment being done and not responding to it, of course it has to go for extraction. Now the teeth which are impacted, so impacted teeth should be considered for removal if it is clear that a partially impacted tooth is unable to erupt into a functional position, it should go for a surgical removal. Now let us talk about supernumerary teeth. Supernumerary teeth, for example, we have a mesiodens, very common supernumerary teeth, usually impacted and should be removed because a supernumerary tooth actually can interfere with the eruption of succedaneous or the permanent teeth and also has the potential for causing the root resorption and displacement of the unerupted tooth. The teeth which are associated with pathological lesion should also be extracted. So, teeth that are involved in pathological lesion may require the removal, for example, tooth with odontogenic cyst, let's say tooth with a dentigerous cyst, you're extracting the tooth with it or with a radicular cyst. In some situation, tooth or teeth can be retained and endodontic therapy can also be performed. However, if maintaining the tooth compromises the complete surgical removal of the pathological lesion with which it is associated, then you may have to remove the tooth completely. For example, in case of radicular cyst, we are trying to do the root canal, but if the root canal itself is not enough to remove the entire uh, cyst pathology, then you have to go for the extraction. Now, radiation therapy, this is very important. So, patients who are to receive radiation therapy for oral head or neck cancer should consider removal of teeth that are in the beam of radiation therapy. However, many of these teeth can still be retained with the proper care. The teeth which are involved in jaw fractures. So, patient who sustain fracture of the mandible or the alveolar process sometimes must have been removed. The tooth involved in the line of fracture can be maintained, but if the tooth is already injured, infected or severely luxated from the surrounding bony tissue or interfere with the proper reduction and fixation of your fracture, then you may have to remove that tooth.
some of the financial issues of course if the patient is not able to pay for the treatment procedure then tooth may be removed for example patient is finding it difficult for the payment of the condition cannot go for implants or bridges yes then you can just go for extraction now the contraindication for removal of tooth or extraction so what are the contraindication for removal in which cases you cannot extract the tooth it is divided into two types the systemic contraindication and the local systemic contraindication for removal of tooth is if the patient health is compromised that does not allow you to extract the tooth for example if the patient has uncontrolled diabetes or end stage renal conditions and control hypertension then yes if he has a recent history of heart attack or stroke shouldn't go for extraction now uncontrolled leukemia and lymphoma can create potential complication because we know that patients with leukemia they are immunocompromised their wbcs are not functioning normally so chance of infection would be higher in them also while you do the extraction excessive bleeding can happen because of less platelets severe uncontrolled cardiac disease patient with severe heart attacks such as unstable angina pectoris or who have a recent history of a heart attack or myocardial infarction should not have a tooth extraction except if it's an emergency situation because in these patients uh, extractions can be stressful and trigger another attack in them systemic contraindication for removal of teeth again if a patient has malignant hypertension he has more chances of developing myocardial insufficiency or a stroke condition due to stress arising from the extraction so these patients should not go for extraction until it's an emergency situation also patients who are having heart condition like infarction they are also on blood thinners anticoagulant that can further increase the chances of bleeding while extraction pregnancy is not a absolute but it's a relative contraindication to extraction especially the patients who are in first or third trimester it is better to defer the extraction first trimester you you can wait for the lady to come in second trimester which is considered to be the safest if she is already in a third trimester you can wait until the delivery of the child why because the chances of extraction in the first trimester especially stressful can lead to spontaneous abortion and the third extraction stress can lead to premature delivery of the baby but middle trimester is considered to be the safest for the extraction unless it is an emergency first trimester and third trimester should be avoided for any extraction patient who has history of severe bleeding such as hemophilia patient platelet disorder like thrombocytopenia patient should not have the teeth extracted until their coagulation or bleeding disorder has been corrected so at always at every step you have to take a physician consult only if the physician give you a green signal then only you go and manage these patient physician reference is very very important a close coordination with the patient the patient also who on aspirin therapy or anticoagulant therapy it is important for you to take the physician consult before doing any calibrations or changes in their medications now patients who are on steroids because they are immunosuppressed already on immunosuppressive therapies uh, bisphosphonates for treatment of their osteoporosis or pages disease or patient on the chemo agents so overall these patients will be immunosuppressed immunocompromised they will have more chances of infection delayed healing doing a routine extraction on these patient is still not a good idea but as i told you emergencies still have to be treated emergencies don't wait for anyone